Discovery video 44. We're at Saratoga. I've highlighted the race conditions here. We got a double preferred race. It's uh, on the turf and it's a non graded stakes race. And uh, over on the Horse Racing Digest page, if you follow the link to view all Discovery videos and the big red arrow gives you a listing of all the value odds and overlay preferred races. These are the races I focus on. I've got a better than average chance on getting a high odds winner in these races and also a better chance that the favorite runs out, does not win. We got uh, all graded stakes, not, excuse me, all non-graded stakes and grade 3 races. And this video we're looking at one of those non-graded stakes. You got all claim, uh, maiden claiming races, all maiden special weight races, all claiming races with a condition like non-winners of something something. Uh, bottom low level claimers, your 5 to 10 range. Here's another condition. All races run over the turf. And this race we're looking at is also on the turf. That's what makes it a double preferred race. And all races run over a wet track. So anytime you have a race, like a turf race, that's also something else. Like in this one, the turf race and the non-graded stakes. It makes it a double preferred race. Okay. Uh, that's like the best situation you can find. Now. This is this kick this race kicks off the pick four wager. The other three races of the pick four are not preferred races at all. Not even single preferred. Alright. You got a couple of grade ones and an allowance race. So See, I'm showing you how to structure your pick four now and your pick threes. You're kicking off the pick four with a double preferred race. There are no other preferred races in the sequence. Okay, so this is going to be the race. All right. Now, do we have the horse? Well, we do have a value odds horse, number one, Tricks in the City. Now... Are we interested in this horse simply because that it's a value odds horse? Well, we're interested in her to start off with because of that. But whatever odds she's going to be near post time uh, is the next thing that we need to know because there's no need there's no need to read the book if we're not going to like the story. All right, and the thing is. The whole ball of wax is what odds is this horse going off at near post time? Here's what it looked like near post time. As you can see there, I went fancy with your graphics. Double preferred race. Near post time odds on Miss Keller. 7 to 2. Tap its fly. 7 to 2. Next in line. Tricks in the city. 25 to 1. So... Now, we're interested in tricks in the city, okay? Now, the next thing I do is I like to look at a little information on the horse. Can I have confidence in my 25 to 1 shot? A lot of good stuff going on with this horse. First of all, your value odds with pace combination. This is your middle, middle early and middle pace advantage and yes that even holds true on the turf they do wire turf races okay and this type of runner doesn't necessarily have to but he's got a distinct she's got a distinct early pace advantage okay uh she's got the best turn time which is the speed around the final turn a 112 as you can see here 108 101 104, 112 superior. So when a horse has a superior turn time rating, that's the speed around the final turn, and also has an early and middle pace advantage, that is very, very strong. Okay? We also have a blue and white. Oh, let me first take a look at this here. 
angle 10. I was just talking to you about angle 10, the value odds angle. There are five certain other icons that when listed on a value odd source are proven to be very potent. Pace, final time, par, late pace, total pace. So our 25 to 1 shot has the pace icon. Therefore, that is a potent angle. Okay. Now, the blue and white trainer, successful trainer pattern. Now, if I want to know what that is for this horse in this race, I have to just flip over and look at the diamond report. The report you're looking at right now is the quick F report. This is the report I use. When I want to know more information about a horse, I look, I flip over and look at the diamond report. Okay. And here's the diamond report. It's got all the comments and I've highlighted the the uh the interesting ones. Showed good speed from the start to the stretch in last start, but faded late. This is a good pattern that indicates it might carry its speed further today, the speed and fade angle. Uh, also, this is a separate comment. Forwardly placed in its last race, but came up short in the stretch. Was coming off a freshening, so that race was well needed. Could improve today and carry its speed further. Second race off a layoff. Okay. These are all separate comments. And now here in orange, I've highlighted the exact trainer pattern. Trainer does well with horses coming second race off the layoff. Wow. If that's not a textbook battle to win a war, you want to talk about methodical? You want to talk about laser precision? Okay. Uh, wow. Incredible. So, I mean, you got, and then, okay. And then, and then, the new report, Winning Overlay Situations A through Z, which is a, it's an e-book for members. It's also a report as you're looking at it right now. I've highlighted tricks in the city. Now here's the deal on these angles. If you see a horse with three angles on this list, that's pretty strong. Tricks in the city has angle H, R, S, T, and X. One, two, three, four, five. Strong as death. Okay. That is to have five angles on this sheet. Absolutely incredible. So in each one of those winning situations or angles is pointing towards a win here today. Okay. So can we have confidence in our 25 to 1 shot now? I think so. So let's put the bets together. First bet is always the win bet. Um, no matter whether we're going to play exotic wagers or not, we always put the win bet down first. We certainly don't want to have a trifecta ticket and somehow miss and have a 25 to 1 shot winner. We've all been there. It's pain. It's pain we don't need to experience. Then we got a 25 to 1 shot, you know, get your money down on the win. Uh, for the video, I go 10 bucks to win. Your bet could be more or less, depending on your bankroll. Some people play only to win, and that's fine. Um, I've got a whole menu of gimmicks and exotic wagers, but first and foremost is the win bet. All right, so we got our $10 win bet now. Now, the next thing I like to do is uh, we got exactas and daily doubles. I always wheel my exacta, so that would be a one-all exacta for two dollars and in the daily doubles i wheel also um my key horse uh, of course you know i could look ahead um previous to the eighth race i can look ahead and see it's a double preferred race and there's a value odds horse so i mean that that much i knew before I, before the race came and I knew what the odds were, but I can get my doubles down. So I wheel, I wheel daily doubles and I wheel exactus. Okay. 
Now, trifecta. Here's how we play it. Oh, by the way, the 13 is scratched. Uh, we're going to play the one on top all by herself in the trifecta. Then in the second position of the trifecta, we're going to put 10, 8, 2, 4. What that represents is the rest of the horses in group A and the top horse in group B. Since the 13 was scratched, the 2 moves up here, becomes the last horse in group A, and the 4 becomes the top horse in group B. So once again, that would be the 1 on top, and then in the second position, 10, 8, 2, 4, and then we go all for third, and then if it's 10 cents superfecta, all for fourth. Now, on to the pick four. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is the only race in the sequence of the pick four that is a preferred race. It's not only a preferred race, it is a double preferred race. Double the fun. Okay, so our key horse is coming out of this race, and obviously our key horse single in the pick four. And then, and then what we do, the way we do it, is we like to find a, a, a single that's going to go off at good odds that has a good chance to win. As opposed to a lot of players uh, seem to want to find that quote-unquote sure thing four to five shot and get it home so that they can hit the pick four. I mean, everybody's going to have that four to five shot. The horse has to win, first of all. And if he does win, what's the pick four going to pay? Everybody's going to have it. So me, I, I'm, I don't gamble at the nickel slot machines. If I'm going to gamble, I do it the right way. All right? I'm singling the 25 to 1 shot in the pick four. Okay? That's how we do it. Now, who do you think we're going to play in the other three races of the pick four? We don't even have to look at the races. doesn't matter. We have a single. Our strategy calls for playing the group A horses in the other three races of the pick four. That simple. Our strategies are very simple and they, they have proven to work over a very long period. Uh, well over a decade. We like to keep it simple. So we're going to single our 25 to 1 shot. We're going to play the group A horses in the other three races of the pick four and the other races of the pick three. Uh, once again, the group A horses are your top four picks in each race. Simple enough, right? So that's that's our pick four wager and our pick three wager. We're singling the 25 to 1 shot as a single in pick three and pick four. Okay, we got all our bets down. Early mid pace advantage. Tricks in the city. Early mid pace advantage here. Turn time. Momentum on the turn here. Carries her enough over to the win. A wire to wire. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you. Um, I highlighted down here. Middle and early pace here. But you see here, I highlighted her total pace at a 202. That being the second best in the race okay i found i find that a little significant uh, worth mentioning okay because if you want to know if a horse can wire a field or if, is it going to hit an invisible wall inside the 16th pole usually your total pace rating if it's you know if it's a horse that has uh you know amongst the top couple of uh, uh in total pace you have you're pretty good confidence that that horse is not going to hit a wall before the before the the, the finish line okay I wanted to show that to you because it was something that I noticed and I mentioned. All right, so we got our win. Final odds, 24 and a quarter to 1. That is 50-50 on the win mutual. Notice your favorite. Where's the favorite here? Right there. Did not win. Finished third, but did not win. And then you have... Uh, a two hundred and seventy-two dollar exacta, a nice with with a seven-two shot second. Uh, the trifecta paid well there. Superfecta, okay. Uh, all in all, we also hit 
the uh, we hit the pick three and the pick four. All the pick threes and the pick four. We had the top pick one in grade in uh, race nine in the grade one test. So we had a top pick there. The top pick his way one in the uh, Whitney. All right, and then in the final race. You got your scratches of 8 and 14. So group A then becomes 9, 11, 5, 6. And we took care of business there in that allowance race. So total returns with the uh, value odds winner, 50-50 winner. Our true odds of 4 to 1. With a distinct pace advantage and a laser engraved successful trainer pattern that I talked to you about there. In a double preferred race, we got a total return here of $5,891.60. We got the win bet, the exacta, the trifecta, the superfecta, the pick threes, and the pick four. All based on our strategies, the way we play them. Now this is video 44 in the Discovery series. Okay, uh, also the previous, so you got 44 in your study library here. Also, the laptop computer, this is the previous video series. There's 424 videos there, okay? So make this your study library, all right? That shows you, these videos show you exactly what to do, how I do it, exactly and our strategies are simple we believe in simple because simple works and uh, the key is finding the right race that's the first thing we do we look for the preferred race then we look and see who's in the preferred race is there a value odds horse or is there an overlay uh, if yes then we can proceed with the rest of uh, everything as scheduled now as far as these odds are concerned I had an email with a with a customer the other day, and uh, they're talking about using the Twin Spires uh, conditional wagering. Twinspires.com has has something called conditional wagering, where you can set a minimum odds requirement on all your bets. So if you have to bet like ahead of time and go to work or something. And let's say you know, okay, I want to bet tricks in the city, but I I only want to bet at you know whatever twelve to one minimum whatever you set it at you can set it at 12 to 1 a minimum at zero minutes to post so if she goes off at at least 12 to 1 your bet will be placed if she gets bet down your bet will not be placed that's conditional wagering at twin spires i use twin spires uh, and the conditional wagering i really love it a lot the customer asked me um about setting the uh your odds and uh, this is a great opportunity for those of you that can't be there to watch that this horse is 7 to 2 and this horse is 7 to 2 and the value odds horse is 25 to 1 near post time. If you have to go and do other things in life and you can't be there to watch the race, the double preferred race, then set your minimum accept odds on your Twin Spires uh, conditional wagering and you don't have to be there. To watch the tote board uh, things cannot get any easier okay they've made it very better friendly and in the age of technology um, you know there's a saying that information is power but that's only partly true information it is the interpretation of the information that is where the power comes from like we read here that, sh that Trix in the City did the speed and fade in her last race, and that she was coming off a layoff, a freshening, and uh, that race was well needed, okay? Could improve today, carry its speed further, second race off the layoff. And then we read that the trainer does very well with horses coming second race off the layoff. That's what that blue and white icon indicated, okay? Uh, and this is the Diamond Report. It has all the more detailed information, okay? And what I do is I use the Quick F Report, and then I refer to the Diamond Report when I need more information, okay? And uh, so it's it's the um, 
it is the uh, the way that you use the information, the way you interpret the information that makes it powerful, not the information itself. Okay, the information itself is not powerful. It is how you, the user, interprets it and uh, uses it. Okay, all right, twenty minutes. I think I've uh, done enough here on a Sunday sermon. So uh, let's go with that. This is a real good video uh, for many reasons. But remember the, remember the process. Qualify the race first as a preferred race and then go from there. Then check your odds near post time or set your minimum odds at, at Twin Spires. Whatever. Remember the process that we do. In every one of these videos, it's the exact same process. It does not change. Okay? And that's why I like making these videos is because the, 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 you know it shows you that everything is very simple and, and methodical the way we do things is very methodical in a proven way that works and I've spent 16 years studying all this uh, to get to get to this point the the videos that you're watching is a culmination of 16 years worth of research okay I have uh, zeroed in on what I talk about in the videos okay so watch as many videos as you can in both video series like I showed you there's two there's two video series there's almost 500 total videos to look at so you know make that your library your discovery videos and your other videos make that your library of learning all right and uh cash some tickets that's the name of the game thank you very much for viewing and good luck with all your bets